CataractCoach.com. Not a genarian with soon exfoliation. Flip and chop is my choice for this tough case. This is a patient who's more than 90 years old. And look at that soon exfoliation material. We'll put in some visco elastic here and try to do what's called viscomedriasis. Bobby Osher taught me this. Injecting the visco elastic, a dispersive agent here at the pupil margin, and you can get a temporary expansion of the pupil. Probably an extra millimeter or so. Look at that. Definitely works. Now, the cornea is already marked off. Look at the dots on the cornea. That's the steep axis of astigmatism. Here comes the diamond keratome on that steep axis to make the main phaco incision. There are some black marks on the cornea. Those are just some extra reference marks. Those are not to be used for the alignment. Again, it's those dots on the cornea here. Measure with the forceps. That's a barely five millimeter pupil. So when you get this rexus done, this rexus better be as big as that pupil. So get in that rexus here. You want the edge of the rexus right up against that pupil. And I'm also looking, and fortunately, there's no wrinkling of the lens capsule. So capsule stability looks pretty reasonable here. Patient's a little bit on the hyperopic side, a little bit of a shallow anterior chamber, but not terrible. I think the Iowa power in this case was about 23 diopters. So maybe a little hyperopic, but not terribly so. Getting that rexus done here. And we'll complete that here and take it out of the eye. Now, in a case like this, this iris is going to come down. It's not going to stay like that. Now, fortunately, we did check the endothelial cell count at the beginning of the pre-op exam, and the patient had a nice, normal endothelial cell count. Actually, pretty darn good for age 90 plus. So now doing some hydro dissection here, nice and slow. Look at the viscoelastic like coming out of the main incision. That just tells me I got to put in more. So using that cannula, get that nucleus up, have the iris, the pupils holding the nucleus for you. A little more dispersive viscoelastic to protect that central corneal endothelium. Coming with the phaco probe here now. And so the nucleus is being held by the pupil that only ke that keeps the pupil open and keeps the nucleus in position. Buzz with the phaco probe, get that chopper around the backside, and there's the chop. Now the nucleus is split into two halves, and you can emulsify each half and aspirate them down. Now, surprisingly, not that dense of a cataract for someone who's in the 90s. And so nice and easy taking out that lens material, being very judicious here with the phaco energy, and very cautious and just kind of aspirating it out. I want to get that one half of the nucleus out first. It'll give us a lot more working room. And so you can get these little fragments out as well. So about, about at this point, about one heminucleus has been removed. And there's a second heminucleus. We can bring that up, go with a chopper behind it, chop off a little piece if you need to, and just fully aspirate this down. This is a complete cataract case. I'm showing you from the beginning to the end, unedited to show you everything that happens in a operating room with me. So this was filmed in our Beverly Hills uh, Surgery Center. And so taking down this last piece of the nucleus, nice and easy. Look at the chopper position and safe position. Protect that poster capsule. The last thing I want to do on a 90 plus year old is an anterior vitrectomy, right? So let's be, just be cautious here. Clean that up, take that last nuclear piece out. There we go, chopper comes out, phaco probe comes out. Time for some cortex removal here. So cortex removal coming up. The patient did get a little bit of systemic um, sedation. One milligram of intravenous Versed, which is midazolam. And so that's a very short-acting benzodiazepine, which will give the patient just enough to take the edge off. You don't want to give too much sedation in these 90-plus-year-olds. As you know, their therapeutic window is very narrow. So cleaning up the cortex here, we're not going to go overboard on too much polishing. We just want to get it pretty cleaned up. There we go. Capsules looks really good there. And you can see also on the cornea, those dots are the steep axis, which is somewhere against the rule. There you go. See those dots on the cornea? That's where we're going to line up our toric IOL. Our cohesive visqualats going inside the eye to fill the capsule bag. Nice, good fill. Good looking rexus. Let's get that lens injected. Here comes the lens. Again, the black marks on the cornea are just backup marks. We're not going to really use those. Injecting that lens inside the capsule bag, and let's get that thing opened up. Monofocal acrylic lens. If you got a 90-plus-year-old macula, listen, you want a monofocal lens. 
Don't tell me how that 90-something-year-old macula is itching for a multifocal or trifocal lens. Listen, I was born at night, but not last night. So let's clean this up really easily here. Take out the viscoelastic. There we go. A little bit of capsule polishing. Now we just got to get that eye well aligned with those toric marks. Let's rotate that toric lens around a little bit. Get it precisely aligned. If you are so inclined, you can use some interoperative aberrometer to check the alignment of that lens. But I know it's pretty darn good. And let's seal up the incision here. I'll make some final adjustments here at the end. And you can see beautiful looking Rexus. And you can see those dots nasally. The dots on the cornea match up beautifully with the dots on the eye well. And the same thing even here temporally. A little bit of last washout here at the end. And that's a beautiful case. And the patient had a fantastic outcome. And the patient was quite happy and quite pleased. So in a case like this, yeah, even if the student exfoliation is relatively extensive and this nonagenarian, I did not feel the need to use a CTR or other device. And I thought the capsule support was actually pretty good. Here at the end, making sure we get out all that viscoelastic because I don't want any pressure spikes in the post-op period. And then we're just about ready to call this done. And it's a case that I enjoyed performing.